Hello everyone, my name is Moe Chan, a fourth year PhD student from the National University of Singapore. I am going to present a stealthier partitioning attacks against Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer networks. Sita Zoy worked with my advisor, Min Suk Kang, from the National University of Singapore. The other three authors, In Ho Choi, Gi Jun Moon, and Eng Vu, are our undergrad interns. Perhaps the most exciting technology behind Bitcoin is a blockchain. Essentially, the blockchain is a chain of block, where each block contains several valid transactions. These blockchains are maintained and updated by all nodes participating in the Bitcoin networks, following a set of consensus rules. These nodes form a peer-to-peer -peer network to transmit the block or transaction data. In this talk, we show how to partition this underlying network. We define partitioning attacks as an attack that isolates one or more victim nodes from the rest of the network. In this attack, the attacker controls all connections of the victim with the peer-to-peer -peer network and arbitrarily disrupts the data transmission. What could go wrong when a Bitcoin node is partitioned? Let us take an example where the merchants on the left-hand side is already partitioned and the attacker tried to launch a double spending attack. In this example, the attacker tricked the merchants to send the product while the transaction paying the merchant is actually paying someone else because all communication of the merchants to the network are under adversary controls. The merchant doesn't know what happened until it is too late. Partitioning the network also enables or improves several other attacks as well, including 51% attacks, selfish mining, censoring transaction, or at a larger scale can take down the entire cryptocurrencies. They won powerful partitioning attacks introduced at Oakland 2017 called the Bitcoin hijacking attacks. The attacker here controls an autonomous system and use the well-known BGP hijacking to hijack the prefix of the victim node. And hence, all the traffic coming through the victim is routed through the attacker. As a result, the attacker can isolate one Bitcoin node or partition multiple nodes at the same time. This demonstrates that large ISP can easily partition the Bitcoin network. But the question here is that, do they really know this attack in practice? Interestingly, we haven't seen any such partitioning attacks in practice. The closest one to this attack is one attack incident where a Canadian ISP hijacks mining pools to steal Bitcoin in 2014. We haven't seen any other hijacking attacks that specifically target Bitcoin. And why there are not many such attacks? The reason is simple. Raw manipulation is immediately visible to the public, and the attacker identities is also revealed, similar to the Canadian ISP in the previous example. In this talk, we asked, can partitioning attack be stealthier? The answer is yes. We present the Airbus attack, a much stealthier partitioning attack against Bitcoin network. Our Airbus attack requires the same attack capabilities as the previous work, which is controlling an ISP. The attacker goal here is to control own connection of the victim node, as you can see on the left-hand side in these figures. The main idea here is to indirectly force the victim node to connect to so-called shadow IPs. We define shadow IPs as any IP address that has a routing path from the victim to itself, including the adversary AS. The shadow IP is attacker and victim specific, which means uh, with a different pair of attacker and victim, the shadow IP sets would be different. In this example, any IP address in ASC and ASD on the right hand side are the shadow IPs because the traffic from the victim to this IP grow through the adversary M. And by forcing the victim to connect to shadow IPs, the attacker naturally becomes the man in the middle of the peer connection, and the attack is successful. This attack is highly intuitive. However, it has two technical challenges. 
First, you may wonder whether they enough side of IP that attacker can use. The second challenge is that how can the attacker influence the peer selection of the victim so that all connections of the victim are made to shadow IPs. In this talk, I'm going to explain how we managed to address these two channels and demonstrate that the Airbus attack is indispensable. For the first channels, I will show you the abundance of shadow IPs with an example. In this example, the victim is a Bitcoin node running on Amazon Cloud and the attacker is a big ISP in the Europe. Then, all small cloud here are the AS hosting the shadow IPs. From our last scale experiment, we found that if the attacker is big enough, it can easily find hundreds of shadow ASs, which contain millions of shadow IPs. Note that the attacker can use any IP address in any of these shadow AS because shadow IP does not necessarily lead to need to be a real Bitcoin node. The adversary can use any IP to pretend to be the real Bitcoin node using that IP address, as long as the attacker is on the path. Compared to the current Bitcoin network uh, has about 10,000 nodes, uh, millions of shadow is a huge number. So we now know that the attacker can control a lot of IPs. Now we discuss how the attacker resolve the second channels that is to influence the victim node peer section with the shadow IPs. To explain that, let me briefly describe the Bitcoin peer connection. Each Bitcoin node open eight hour connection to other peers and accept up to 117 connection initiated by other node. So attacker's goals here is to occupy all 125 peers of the victim with the shadow IPs. As a high level, uh, Occupying incoming connection can be done simply by connecting to the victim with the shadow IPs, and it is easy in zero. On the other hand, attacker must influence the victim to open the connection to the shadow IPs, and this is much harder. And how to do that is the focus of the rest of the talk. Before knowing how to influence the victim, we need to know how a Bitcoin node open an outgoing connection. Basically, Bitcoin node store the IP address of other peers in two tables. The two tables are the new table store all IP this node learn from other peer, and the try table contain the IPs that this node has connected to in the past. Uh, when it's open an outgoing connection, it randomly choose a reachable IPs from either two table. And it is important to note that only reachable IPs are chosen because the two table also have unreachable IPs that the node cannot open connection to. So the attacker goes here is to dominate the reachable IPs in both tables with the shadow IPs. In these old days, it is surprisingly easy to do so. A paper at HCX Security 2015 demonstrate that Flooding only 3,000 botnet IP address is enough to dominate the tables easily because of some bug in the Bitcoin clients. However, Bitcoin is quickly fixed and flooding IPs with the botnet is now nearly impossible. Then, how can the Airbus attacker still dominate the two table in the current Bitcoin client? Our attack strategy is simple. The attacker simply sent low rate traffic of shadow IPs to the victim and patiently wait for them to fill up the true table. For occupying the new table, the attacker keeps sending the shadow IPs with a low rate traffic um, to the victim to replace the unreachable, in the unreachable IP in this table. And this is possible because unreachable IPs are usually deleted after 30 days. Let's just show how shadow IPs dominate the reachable IP via the plot on the right hand side. The so X axis here indicates the number of days since the attack start, and the Y axis indicates the ratio of reachable IPs. The orange color here uh, indicates the shadow IPs, and the gray areas indicates the legitimate IPs. As you can see, the shadow IP dominate the reachable IP after 30 days because by then, shadow IP have replaced many unreachable peers in this table. 
for the try table, the attacker patiently wait because they want reachable IP in move from the new to the try table every two minutes on Earth Bridge. Note that there is no other way to directly insert IP into the try table, but only to wait until the IP is naturally moved from the new to the try table. We saw a similar plot uh, for the ratio of the silo IP uh, to the reachable IP in the try table, and we can see that the number of silo IP keep increasing gradually in this try table. As a main reason, we find that the adversary can occupy all eight outgoing connections of the victim with the silo IPs in five to six bits. This is here one example. The solid red line here so the number of outgoing connections have been made to the silo IP. And as we can see from this plot, all eight outgoing connections of the victim are occupied after 40 days. This is easily understandable when we see the increasing probabilities of one silo IP is selected from the tables in the dashed line. Although the attack works, some people may think that several weeks of attack execution seem to be too long. Uh, but we believe that ZD is totally acceptable uh, because the attack is stealthy. So why the Airbus attack is stealthy? First, unlike the previous BGP hijacking based partitioning attacks, the Airbus attack requires no round ma manipulation techniques. Uh, and hence, the attacks are invisible to the BGP monitors. Second, the attacks require only a very low rate of data plane uh, traffic of only 500 bit per second per victim or uh, equivalent to about two IP per second. And for this reason, it is difficult to distinguish the attack traffic from the legitimate traffic. You may also wonder who could be the attacker of the Airbus attacks. Let us summarize that the attacker should be easily collect millions of shadow IPs and also patiently wait for several weeks. And based on this criteria, we found that all tier one network like AT&T, CenturyLink, NTT, can non exist attacks against any Bitcoin nodes. And also, uh, last year, two networks like Singtel or China Telecom can also target the majority of Bitcoin nodes. Why ISP may not have direct motivation to attack Bitcoin, some nation state adversary can control one or more of the regional ISP can also non exist Airbus attacks. This is not a far-fetched idea, given that some countries are already uh, attacking other countries in this cryptocurrency domain. So we have seen that Bitcoin is vulnerable to the Airbus attacks. What about other cryptocurrencies? Can Airbus attacks also work against them? We found that the peer-to-peer -peer network implementation of Bitcoin is widely replicated in many other blockchain projects. In fact, we found uh, there are at least 34 our top one of those cryptocurrencies copy the implementation of Bitcoin. And for this reason, all of them are potentially vulnerable to the Airbus attacks as well. Now, we discuss the countermeasures against the Airbus attacks. First, we note that the Airbus attacks exploit no software bugs, but only the topological advantage of being last ISP including stably being the man in the middle of large number of IP addresses for several weeks. And hence, the Airbus attack is hard to counter against. There exist some trivial but not so practical solutions, such as maintaining trusted authority, for example, some wirelessed node. However, the permissionless design of Bitcoin network may be violated. There are also some third-party proxies like VPN, Tor, or VLA networks. Um, however, they are not decentralized. Also, we can have several partial solutions that can make the attack harder. For example, we can reduce the table size so that there are less space for the shadow IPs to fill in. Bitcoin node can also open more outgoing connections so that the shadow IP need to occupy the table with higher ratio to be selected. And ZD deploy is a nested version. Bitcoin node now have 10 outgoing connections. When the node select is peer, it can also incorporate the AS topologies. Um, ZD could be a promising solution and is it being tested now? 
Also, uh, Beacon Node can protect peers providing fresh data to mitigate the effect of partitioning attacks, and ZZ also being tested as well. In sum, uh, they are partial solution to the robust attacks, but they need to be carefully evaluated before the deployment. In this talk, we present the Airbus attacks, a partitioning attack that can isolate the Bitcoin node in a stealthy manner with low rate of attack traffic and several weeks of patiently executing the attacks. We demonstrate that large ISP cannot this attack against almost all Bitcoin node with elastic version. Mitigating the Airbus attack is soon to be unfortunately challenging because it exploits no software bugs, but only the topological advantage of being a NAS ISP. For more updates on the countermeasures, please visit our website at erebus-attacks.com.nus.edu.sz. That's the all for my presentation. My name is Moishan, a fourth year PhD student. Uh, I will graduate within a year. So please feel free to contact me for any follow-up questions. Thank you for listening.